There was an almost eerie silence around the table as everyone sat down for Thanksgiving dinner. Ms. Fern Musgrave, widow of Colonel Musgrave and owner of the Triple Cross Ranch, has invited all the hands to join her in the ranch house for dinner. William Travis James, known as Cowboy Bill, Dusty Trails, Slim, Red, and Sleepy Kid the Wrangler are cleaned and polished for this special occasion. The boys had looked forward to this special invitation and talked about it for days. There was lots of talking about what they hoped the cook, California, would fix to go with the turkey they were all prepared to enjoy. And there was the reason for the silence. The turkey. Well, howdy! Welcome to Tales from the Trail Boss's Journal. A visit to adventures in the Old West, written by the old trail boss, Pastor Jack Bleese, in the journal he kept during his many years on the trail. We'll hear today's story, and then we'll gather around the campfire and share some thoughts on a piece of relevant scripture and discuss the topic the story addresses. Today's story is entitled, Foul Play Suspected. Our story begins near Goodnight, Texas. The date, November 23rd, 1886. It all began so simply. Slim Watson, Ms. Fern's neighbor, had given the ranch owner a baby turkey chick last spring and she chose to put it in a coop all its own behind the ranch house and away from the other animals. That way she could feed it herself and watch it grow. And grow it did. (laughs) Cowboy Bill had warned Ms. Fern not to get too attached to the turkey. Now you know we never make pets of any of the animals raised for future food. Oh, of course. I know better than that. The colonel told me that years ago when we had our farm back in Pennsylvania. But the beginning signs of trouble showed their face back in late summer. One day, as Bill was bringing in the mail he picked up in town, Ms. Fern motioned to Bill to wait for her. As she approached, she had a big smile on her face. Bill, have you sent in the entries for the county fair? Uh, No, ma'am. They're not due until the end of next week. We were waiting to see just which animals are in the best shape to show. Oh, good. I believe Trevor will be ready. He's so beautiful now and has such a splendid countenance and spirit. Would you take a look? Bill got a puzzled look on his face. After a moment, he asked, Ma'am, who or what is a Trevor? Oh, you know, Trevor, my pet turkey. Pet turkey? Miss Fern? I know, Bill, it's okay. I'm still planning on this turkey for Thanksgiving, but I just have gotten some attached to him. And after the fair, we can turn him loose in the barnyard with the other animals. Well, that was then, and Ms. Fern was good to her word. Trevor won the blue ribbon and spent the last couple of months strutting around the barnyard with the feathered tail in the air. But still, every day or so, she came out to the barnyard to throw out feed for the bird. This last Monday, when she finished feeding and turned back toward the house, Bill thought he saw a tear in her eye. Bill approached slowly. Ms. Fern, uh, the boys and I all appreciate your invitation for turkey dinner on Thanksgiving. But if you would rather not... Oh, we... no, Bill. I invited all you boys for a Thanksgiving turkey dinner, and a musgrave always keeps their word. I know, ma'am, but, but this year is different. Ms. Fern shook her head. No. The plan since the turkey came here was to have him for Thanksgiving, and so it will be. With that, she wiped her eyes with her handkerchief and walked to the house. Yesterday, California, the cook, came to the bunkhouse. Bill, I need one of your boys to take on the task of butchering the turkey for dinner tomorrow. Bring it to the house so I can get it cleaned and prepared. That afternoon, Bill asked Dusty to go get the turkey and get him ready to cook. Trevor? Slaughter? You mean Slaughter Trevor? Trevor? Oh, no, not you too. Dusty just looked at Bill and hung his head. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. So, Cowboy Bill went to Slim, then Red, and finally Sleepy Kid, the Wrangler. Man by man, they all came up with a reason they just couldn't do the deed. So finally... Bill took the axe and went to find the turkey. 
He caught the bird by the hind feet and tied it up. He thought to himself, He really is beautiful. Fifteen minutes later, Bill was standing there looking at the turkey. California came around the corner. Bill, where's the turkey? Over there. I'm, I'm just, well, it's, I thought that maybe. Oh, my goodness. You're some tough bunch cowboy. Well, then you do it. I mean, I don't know why you ask us to do this anyhow. Oh, you don't. Because I'm the one that's had to watch that sweet old lady feed that bird all year. But tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. You go to the bunkhouse with your friends. I'll do what has to be done. Give me that hatchet. So Bill handed the hatchet to California and walked away. Thursday, the boys all cleaned up proper, came to the house. They offered Ms. Fern their greetings and went to the table. Cowboy Bill said the prayer, and everyone started in. It was quiet while they all ate their soup. Uh, that, that's going to be enough for me. I, I, I guess I'm not real hungry. Uh, uh, yeah, me, me either. At that moment, California burst through the kitchen door. He carried a big serving tray with a lid on it. As he placed it on the table... He said, dig in, boys. This is my best Thanksgiving meal yet. As he began to lift the lid, everybody held their breath. Suddenly there was a noise from the front porch. Everybody turned heads to look. Standing in front of the big window that looks out over the pasture was Trevor, tail in the air and looking proud as he pranced across the porch. But California, if that's Trevor, what are we eating? Bill, Miss Fern, um, I couldn't do it either. So I looked around for the next biggest bird and cooked him. Oh, no. What's the matter, Slim? Uh, uh I, I was just thinking, what if this is Trevor's cousin? <laughs> <laughs> the story is based around, obviously, this festival that we call Thanksgiving. I had uh, several different kind of approaches and things came to my mind when, when God gave me this story. Um, and so I'll, I'll kind of give you a scripture that goes with both of them. The, the first that came to my mind was Psalms 100, the fourth verse, which I love so much. We all know Psalm 100 pretty well. Psalm 104 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and give thanks to him and, and praise his name. Thanksgiving. I think that that particular verse is very apropos. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. You know, it's, it's very easy to just simply say, thank you, Father, praise your name. And I think that's so appropriate. Thanksgiving is, is, uh, means so many different things to different people. One of the things that, that came to my mind again as I was writing this was the, the, the thought that we have, and we certainly have talked about it because I think it's so important to us, we have the freedom to gather on a holiday like this and to give thanks for, the, for all of the blessings that we have around us. Uh, you know, the, the first Thanksgiving was 1621. The first year that the pilgrims were here, 1620, was a rough, rough year. But that second year, they, they did have a vulnerable harvest. And so they gathered together to give thanks for, for God seeing them through another year and, and providing for them according to his riches and glory, of course. Um, so many people forget that when the pilgrims came across from England, uh, one of the things that they were giving thanks for was the freedom to worship the way that they wanted to. They had lived under a system in, in England where the, where the king was the head of the Church of England as well and very restrictive. So they didn't get off the boat asking where the, where the home, closest Home Depot was or Starbucks. They got off and they, and they worked, and they worked, and then they gave thanks for the fruits that they had, but appropriately... They gave thanks to God for those things. I think that's one of the most important things we can possibly think of as we approach a holiday like Thanksgiving. So joining me today as we celebrate is Miss Dorinda Blees. Good to see you again. Oh, good to see you. Joe Joffrey over there um, looking all spiffy in his old Trail Boss podcast shirt this morning. Appreciate that. Howdy. <laughs> the newest member of our cast Katie Wolf up in Muncie, Indiana. Howdy, ma'am. Hello, hello. Glad to have you with us. 
So I guess um, I want to. We're going to kind of make this brief, but I think it's important. I know that when I was when I was working on a message to go along with Thanksgiving, why well, one of the things that I did was I thought, you know, I'm just going to make a list of things that I have to give thankful for, or, or blessings is another term for it. And what I found when I started writing was, I just kept writing, and kept writing, and kept writing. And I think that that's, that, that's a, a, probably a good exercise for everybody. So very simply, um, and we'll just start with Katie. Um, give, me, give me one thing that you're going to be really thankful for over the holiday this year. Oh, wow. Um, like you said, so many when you start actually thinking about all of the blessings in your life. Yeah. But um, one thing for me is that I've been I've been placed in a position where I can actually make a difference and do some good, um, whether that is visible to people outside of it or not. Um, I, I have a very special team and what we do is so important and you know not everybody gets to say that every day wow i guess so joe well i was hoping the topic would be a little lighter maybe i was thinking about what kind of pie we would say we <laughs> was our favorite dessert <laughs> well, wait, that's oh you read ahead that's the next question <laughs> um yeah it's hard to narrow that down to one thing uh, what i try to do this time of year all, all the time, but, you know, more top of mind um, in this season is just to start it out with a, a thankful heart for uh, the sacrifice of Jesus. So even though that's not Thanksgiving, but Christmas is coming right up, um, you know, let's, let's go ahead and get uh, Jesus and Christmas on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> Along with all the new Barbies. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Dorinda? I'm, I'm actually going to look at a little bit broader term, which encom encompasses so many things. But that is all of God's blessings on a daily basis. It includes family, um, the animals that he blesses us with, and... Uh, gives us to take care of and um that in, that just includes a whole lot of things very very good yeah well joe i guess i'm in i'm in kind of the, the same mode you are i know that as as i look at my life and maybe that this comes more into focus but as i look at my life the first thing that i'm thankful for is god's love that that god would take a cowboy like me and with all that i've been through in all my life and still daily he loves me and I'm so thankful for that. And so much, so much then the rest of that falls out of that. I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for our little church family that we have that that's part of Cowboy Church Live. I'm thankful for this podcast, which just gives us a, a little bit different way to, to kind of talk about God's love with cowboys and cowgirls out there and part of the Western heritage culture. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for you guys and uh, your love and your support for all that we do. So I, I, I better stop, because as I say, once you, <laughs> once you start listening, then they just keep on going. So. I was going to say, well, now you got more than one. <laughs> yeah. that's, why, that's why I went last. <laughs> uh, here's something you made me think of. You know, at, at Christmas, the, um, the routine, typically, um, is at some point, in our family gathering, our family tradition, to to read the Christmas story, right, and share that. But I think this year, I'm going to look up the story of those first pilgrims and maybe share a little history around the table. Great thought. I'm not sure we all reflect on that. No, I, I, I agree with you 100%. It was incredible hardship. So, Katie, any other thoughts in this regard? Things, things you're thankful for, things that we should think about being thankful for? Um, I don't know. It's It's been a weird year, and I guess as we get closer to the end of it, I just look back on it, and, you know, even when it was just gross, it was never done. 
there was always an opportunity to rebuild or grow or learn. Um, and it's easy to wallow in those down moments. Uh, but to just remember the people that you have that you're thankful for, that no matter what, you know, when you're sobbing your eyes out and your heart is just crushed, you know, they say, I love you and I'm here. And even if you can't say anything back, because you just can't form the words, they're there. That's that's beautiful. I love that so much. Yeah, that's great. Drinda, any other thoughts? I used mine up. Oh, did you? Use it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll close with this. Uh, this this whole story has a kind of a Thanksgiving theme, and I guess we would be remiss if we didn't thank you all for listening, for being a being a part of our our podcast. Some of you know. I'll just go ahead and put it in here, Joe. We haven't. We were so honored here about three weeks ago that at a large podcast conference in uh, Houston, Texas. Why the old Trail Boss was awarded the most original podcast for 2023, and we are so <laughs> gratified that the concept that we put together is uh, is speaking to people and meets their needs. And so, thank you for your for your comments. If there's something that you would like to hear us address, maybe a, a topic that you would like to have us have a discussion about the Cowboy Way, well, you can always reach us through our website www.trailbossministry.com. Until then, I'll just say, God bless you guys. Thank you. May the good Lord take a liking to you. Joe? Well, we hope you've enjoyed this ride into the days of yesteryear with the old trail boss. If you enjoyed today's story and discussion, we have just one favor to ask. Can you share our podcast with just one person? Someone who needs some hope or encouragement. Or maybe like you, they simply share our love of the Western heritage culture. Send them a link from your podcast player. Or direct them to theoldtrailboss.com. The podcast award Pastor Jack mentioned was presented at the Spark Media Annual Podcast Conference. Spark Media is a leading force in the media and entertainment industry dedicated to fostering creativity, innovation, and excellence in Christian podcasting. Look for a link to their website in the show notes for this episode. We are a listener-supported outreach of Trail Boss Ministry. At trailbossministry.com, you'll find a general store with items you can use to express or share your faith or request one of our free cowboy Bibles. It's the New Testament plus Psalms and Proverbs, sized to fit perfectly in the console of your truck, your purse, or your saddlebag. And if you are able to financially support the podcast, you'll find donation links to Look in the show notes for those links. We hope you enjoy this Thanksgiving and Christmas season surrounded by those you love and those who love you. And so now until we see you next time, some trails are happy ones, others are blue. It's the way you ride that trail that counts. There's a happy one for you. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again, happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds when we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails to you. Until we meet again. Happy trails. God bless you. And may the good Lord take a liking to you. <laughs>